Previously, in the fourth installment of the DevOps Shop, Tools Gold, sifting through the pool of DevOps tools, we highlighted the most reliable DevOps tools you should be learning first. Ansible made that list, and in this video, we bring Ansible into focus by showing its basic functionality and requirements. We demonstrate how to use Ansible for some basic DevOps tasks and provide you with a list of free resources from Cisco DevNet so you can learn and practice on your own before putting Ansible into action in your own networks. Let's get started. Ansible is a popular suite of software tools that enable infrastructure as code. It is open source, and the suite includes functionality for provisioning, configuration management, and deployment. Ansible is designed to configure both Unix-like systems and MS Windows. Ansible is agentless, meaning it relies on temporary remote connections via SSH or Windows Remote Management, which allows PowerShell execution. The Ansible control node runs on most Unix-like systems that are able to run Python, which includes Windows. The first thing we need to do is install Ansible if it isn't installed already. There are several ways to do this, depending on your operating system. Ansible is written in Python, so in keeping with that theme, I've just installed Ansible with the Python package manager pip, and that is what the Ansible docs recommend as well. The command to install is pip install dash dash user Ansible. To confirm installation type, Ansible dash config dash dash version. The Ansible config utility allows users to see all the configuration settings available, their defaults, how to set them, and where their current values come from. One of the first things you'll see in the results is the location of the config file. For a new install, the results may be config file equals none. The config file is found in one of two places usually, the default config file or the user config file. However, Ansible will search for the config file in the following places in the following order. A very basic config file can look something like this, but can include much more such as SSH keys, remote users, and roles. And you can create one at the default location as a fallback. If you want to follow along with the demos we're about to show, you can find all the code you need in this repo. Starting each project or task with a security first mindset will save you and your team from a lot of headaches down the road. Access control lists or ACLs have historically been your first line of defense in blocking unwanted traffic into and out of a network or device. Instead of repeatedly typing in CLI commands to create or update an ACL, we can write those commands just once and use Ansible to make that an easily repeatable process. We'll be configuring an ACL on the Catalyst router in the iOS XE latest code, always on Sandbox, at devnetsandbox.cisco.com. There are three files we will be working with from our local environment. The first is the host file, which is an inventory file containing information about the managed devices. This is where we specify devices in groups. For our purposes, we will create the host file in the root directory of our project, specifying one group called iOS XE devices and adding one device to it, iOS XE latest. Secondly, we will create a directory called host vars and in it we will create a file called iOS XE latest, which holds all the connectivity data for that device listed under the iOS XE devices list in our host file. When we run our playbook later, it will look to the host file, which will in turn look to this file for connectivity details. The third file is the playbook. A playbook is the main means of Ansible automation. Each playbook is a collection of tasks, and each task is a collection of modules. Playbooks are written in YAML, which is intuitive and human readable. Space indentation is important. Here is our playbook, which we've named add ACL iOS XE .yaml. The Ansible playbook command is used to run the playbook. As you can see, we indicate which playbook to run and with the dash I or dash inventory option, specify the inventory host path, in our case, the host file. When we run this command, Ansible will look to the host file to run the playbook against every entry in that file. We have iOS XE latest listed there, and because of that, Ansible will search in the host vars directory for a file named iOS XE latest and will pull the connection information we've specified from there. After running the playbook, the OK field tells us our task was successful and the change field shows that a change was made. We can SSH into the device to verify that. 
the output from the show IP access list command tells us that the access list was created as per our specifications. If we want to update our ACL to say remove the line 30 entry and add a line 40 entry, we can create a similar playbook, namely at update ACL iOS XE .yaml and referencing my ACL. We can run this command to execute it. The output from Ansible tells us that this was a success as well. We're still SSH'd into the device, so we can quickly verify the updates were made. Let's see. Yep, the line 30 entry is gone and we have a line 40 added. Finally, we can delete the ACL with this playbook. For an experienced engineer, this might seem like a lot of work for a single ACL, as using Ansible to complete this task will take longer than just configuring the ACL on the device from the CLI. However, this playbook can be reused many times, so it will save you a lot of time in the long run. In Ansible, variables can be defined with an inventory file, created in the playbook, created in a separate file and included within the playbook, or passed from the command line. Previously, we were storing device details in the host vars folder with one file for each device. Another way to feed device info into the playbook is by adding device details in the host file itself. The playbook will take that information from the host file before sending it to the devices to connect. We're only using two files this time. In this case, the host file includes the two groups with their devices, and that format should look familiar. Here we have the variables defined for each of those groups. The other file is our playbook. We have selected hosts all, so both of these tasks will be run against all devices in our host file. It will be getting the connection data for those variables, where we declared it to be either iOS or iOS XR in this case. We can see in the first task, checking connectivity, the command is being given and will use register to store the output into a new variable called iOS output. In the next task below, we're using our new variable to display the standard output onto the screen. Let's see the results of running this playbook. Fantastic. In Ansible, conditionals are used to run a task when a condition is met, often use the when clause conditional, and should be true for a task to run. We can create a new playbook, show IP routes conditionals, similar to our show IP routes playbook, but remove the show output task so we can focus on conditionals. Instead of that task, we add these two tasks to the end of our playbook, and Ansible will skip over the one that is false and run the one that is true. This is based on the logic of the when conditionals. The host file will remain the same as it was for our show IP routes with variables host file. Let's run the playbook. We can see that the first task, the connectivity check, ran smoothly. We can also see it skipped the verification of output fail task, but ran the verification of output success task based on the logic of our win conditionals. This time I changed the passwords of both devices in the host file so they're incorrect. You can see that it failed the first task, the connectivity check. Ansible ran the second task, the verification of output fail task, and skipped the final task, the verification of output success task, based on our conditionals. We can refactor this, and instead of using two tasks with when conditionals, use one task with an if-else statement. We just need to comment out those two tasks, checking for failure, and uncomment or add this task instead. See the GitHub repo for details. This will do something similar to the two tasks we just looked at. It will print the failure message if the iOS output message is true, exists, or is not empty, and it will print success if iOS output failed, is false, doesn't exist, or is empty. This essentially displayed the same information that the check connectivity task presented, but we wanted to demonstrate how we can use the variable we created with register and use the data it contains to dictate what is ran and printed based on our if-else conditional. It is useful to see the results of running Ansible playbooks right there on the screen. This can really speed up the pace when checking the status of devices. However, in DevOps, we want our automation to run without us having to type commands. There are many ways to accomplish this with tools like GitLab, Jenkins, GitHub Actions, Automation Platform, etc., or even a good old-fashioned cron job. 
Regardless of the tool, we can use a local action in our Ansible playbook to create files for us to review, compare, or feed into another tool in our pipeline. For this, we will use the same host file but create a new playbook, localfiles.yaml, which builds upon our conditionals playbook, adding a local action task at the end that has three parts. Module. This tells it what to do, in our case, copy. Content tells Ansible what content to put there. In our case, we print the inventory host name, which is a built-in Ansible variable that is the name for the current host being iterated over in our play. Firstly, we will write that no matter what, and then print the success or failure message and accompanying data, which are based on our if-else conditional. Destination simply tells Ansible where to copy that data to, overwriting the data there, and if the file doesn't exist, it will create it. Again, we use the special inventory hostname variable, this time to name the file. You can also embed a timestamp in the file in order to differentiate them. Upon running the playbook, Ansible created two local files with the show IP route output from the two devices in our host inventory, which look like this. Most of the demos we've seen in this video involve the devices in the free DevNet Always On sandboxes. For an extensive list of working Ansible files from iOS XE as well as iOS XR, NXOS, and ASA projects, including playbooks, variables, configs, and scripts, check out the Ansible projects repo from Mohammed Rafi. The new Learning Labs at developer.cisco.com slash learning has an abundance of free Ansible offerings. At the present time, just searching for Ansible, we can find learning modules such as these. My favorite current offering there is the Ansible and Model Driven Telemetry Workshop, which combines and ties together some of the modules just shown. Some of the learning labs we have mentioned make use of the free DevNet sandboxes at devnetsandbox.cisco.com, and there is currently a sandbox dedicated entirely to APIs, Ansible, and automation. It's called Automate ISE with Open APIs, Python, and Ansible. Cisco Code Exchange is the place to discover code repositories related to Cisco technologies. There are currently 32 repos and counting there written entirely in Ansible for you to use with technologies such as ISE, ACI, NSO, Tetration, and more. And there are many more repos at Code Exchange which implement Ansible as part of the repo. In summary, Ansible is an open source, agentless automation tool that can be leveraged for network configuration management functions. Ansible playbooks provide capabilities to automate daily operations tasks. Automating repetitive tasks with Ansible can reduce OpEx costs and improve efficiency. With increasing support of modules, it is possible to automate even more network functions through Ansible. In this video, we introduced you to the basic concepts and functionality of Ansible, and we saw important pieces of Ansible like the Ansible config file, the host file, and the playbook. Then we demonstrated how to add or update an access control list on a router, as well as how to use variables and conditionals in Ansible to create local files. Finally, we showed how to take your Ansible skills to the next level with Ansible projects, free learning labs and sandboxes from Cisco DevNet, as well as the also free Cisco Code Exchange, where engineers share and borrow code, often using Ansible for use with Cisco products. We'd like to thank you for exploring Ansible with us. It is a fantastic foundational technology for DevOps. We hope you've learned something and or are motivated to take the leap to learn more and perhaps start automating with Ansible. To learn more about Ansible and all things DevOps, visit us in the Cisco DevOps Forum or in the Cisco community in the Developer Hub.